welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. It's hard not to feel powerless sometimes when you're unwillingly estranged from your own adult child. After all, this is not your choice, it's theirs. You can't make them behave differently, and you suffer the consequences every day of a decision that they are making unilaterally, without your input. And that is a very frustrating and sad position to be in. By the way, I made another episode of this podcast a few shows back called You Are Not Powerless. So if that is how you're feeling, you might want to listen or re-listen to episode 68 along with today's show. You can find episode 68, You Are Not Powerless, in your podcast feed or online at reconnectionclub.com slash 68. Today I'd like to talk about three very specific ways that rejected parents give away their power during estrangement from their adult children. If you're making any one of the following three assumptions, I want you to know that you can change your mind at any time and take back your power. All three of these assumptions have the effect of rendering you and your input absolutely useless. Let's talk about what these are and later I'll say a few words about why so many parents seem to be drawn to these assumptions despite the dire consequences for reconnection. Assumption number one is assuming the estrangement is entirely about something that happened in the past, which of course no one can change. Sometimes parents will say to me that they think their child is estranged because of their divorce. And I'll say, when was the divorce? And they'll say something like, 13 years ago. And for me, that raises the question, what's been happening for the last 13 years? Things that happened in the past can, of course, affect your relationship with your child. But how those events are managed and dealt with is usually more important to the relationship than the events themselves. Focusing on something that happened that you can't change is basically throwing up your hands and saying, it's no use. I can't change the past. And if my child insists on hanging on to what happened, there's nothing I can do about it. If that strikes a chord for you, you might want to go back and listen to episode number 46, which was called, You Can't Change the Past, for a different way to look at this common mental roadblock. That was episode 46, You Can't Change the Past. The upshot is, your relationship with your child is troubled here and now, in the present day. There's something that needs to happen that's not happened yet, or there's something that is happening that's getting in the way of your child wanting to stay close. So focus on the present where you can figure out today's issues, which might have started in the past, but didn't stay there. The only time you have to make repairs is today. So don't assume the estrangement is just about the past. Assume there's something going on right now that you can have an impact on. The second assumption that steals your power is assuming your child is brainwashed by someone else. Now, there's no question that spouses and partners and others can and do have an influence on your child's thinking and behavior, just as your peers do on your thinking and behavior. But the influence of others is more often in the nature of allowing rather than causing or creating your child's estrangement. If your child's spouse has said to them, you have to choose between me and your parents, well then, I am truly sorry to have to say this, but your child appears to be 
in a pretty abusive relationship. And so the problem is bigger than just this estrangement. I really hope that is not the case because it is a devastating problem for the loved ones of people in abusive relationships. If an adult chooses to be in an abusive relationship, then legally there's nothing that anyone, even their parents, can do for them. They have to choose to leave. It's very hard to watch and really sad for families. The good news is, if your child was not raised in the presence of abuse, then it's very unlikely that he or she has chosen an abusive partner. Abuse doesn't typically pop up spontaneously. It tends to be passed down through generations. So unless you have reason to suspect that your child might gravitate toward abuse because it's familiar, she's probably not in an abusive relationship, which means that her partner is not controlling her. That was a little detour because a controlling relationship where your child isn't allowed to be close to you would be an abusive relationship. But I've spoken to people who have cut off their parents of their own free will, and they have told me that their parents blame their spouse, and that their spouse actually has nothing to do with it. But it is very common to blame an adult child's spouse or someone else who's close to them, and to imagine that if that person were not in the picture, your child would never have done this, or would soon come back to you. But if you want to keep some power over what happens in the future and the kind of relationship you share, it is best to assume that this estrangement is your child's choice, for whatever reason. If he, your child, perceives a loyalty bind and he's chosen someone else over his parents, then there are ways you can approach that without making things worse. But that's not what this episode is about. So I'll just say that in general, other people are a distraction from the one person whose heart you need to be able to recapture. And as long as you're focused on the wrong person, you won't do anything to make the repairs with your child that may be necessary. The third assumption I'd like to mention today is assuming that your child is mentally ill for example, with borderline or bipolar personality disorder, and that's why she's estranged. I did another episode on this, which I invite you to check out. I can't remember the episode number, but it, I think it was called, Does Your Child Have a Personality Disorder? This assumption is just like the brainwashing assumption, except that instead of assuming she's easily brainwashed, you're assuming she's mentally ill. Both of these are not only quite unflattering, but they're also things that you can't do anything about. They leave you utterly powerless. Research has uncovered a tendency in parents to seek outside causes for estrangement. And these rarely jibe with what adult children say are the real reasons for seeking distance from their parents or other family members. Focusing on external factors might help you avoid feeling bad about yourself, but at the same time, it robs you of power. If your behavior had something to do, anything to do with your child's decision, that doesn't mean you need to be ashamed of yourself. It means you have the ability to reset the relationship and make things right between yourself and your child. So the next time you're tempted to look at your child's circumstances to find the reasons for this hurtful behavior, remember that you're taking your own power away. The most effective approach to an unwanted estrangement is to look for ways in which you yourself can have an impact on how your child feels about your relationship. It takes tremendous courage to do this important work. You may need to heal and grow stronger before it even makes sense to try. Most parents I work with have quite a bit of personal healing to do, and it always starts with taking the focus 
off of the past, off of your child's spouse or partner, and off of the specter of mental illness so that you can place your focus where it can actually do some good, either for yourself or for your relationship with your child. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.